Hi, Daniel here. In the last video, I talked about the laser chasing robotic arm. In this video, I'm going to talk about using the same robot to type on a keyboard. There are different ways to do this. One simple way is to hard code the locations of the keys directly into the robot. The problem with that approach is that every time you move the keyboard, you'll need to enter the locations again. The robot that I have built does not have this problem because it uses deep learning to locate all the keyboard letters and because it constantly tracks its own location. Here's what I mean by using deep learning to locate all the letters. Over here, we have a webcam. It's looking directly down at the keyboard. Its video output is shown on this window here. If you look closely at the window, you can see that all the letters are located and detected correctly. I can move the keyboard a little bit up. Still detecting fine. Move it back down. I can rotate it. Still good. And I can even tilt it. Still working good. And here's what happens when I put the pen across the keyboard. Here's what I mean by tracking the location of the robot and the vector. I put a red dot on the robot and I use OpenCV Huff Transform to find the location of any red circle. You can see that the green circle is constantly drawn over the red dot. Now I'm gonna start explaining what goes on under the hood. The first step to locate the letters is finding regions of interest on the keyboard. Each video frame from the camera is first converted into black and white, like this. It is then filtered to capture the brighter pixels, as shown here. All the white regions here are regions of interest. They will be fed into a convolutional neural net for detection. If a number or a symbol is detected, the related region will be discarded because I only want the robot to type on the ladders. Here is the architecture of my convolutional neural net. The input layer is a 30 by 30 by 1 image. Each region of interest we talked about will be fed into this layer. The output of this neural net is a vector of 61 scores. Each score represents how similar the input is to the corresponding letter, number, or symbol. In this architecture, 3x3 kernels are used for all the convolutions. ReLU is used for the activation functions. Max pulling is used to decrease the size of the layers. Batch normalization and dropout are used to prevent overfitting. It takes a lot of data to train a neural net, so I wrote a Python script to generate all the training images I need. Here are some sample images for the letter A, letter E, number 5, and the dollar sign. I created about 300 images for each character and there are 61 characters in total. I applied Gaussian blur to all the images because the camera in my setup isn't very good and so its images are a bit blurry.
The dataset needs to be diverse for the neural net to perform well. For example, all the letter A images are different from each other. They can vary in font, font size, and brightness. But they're still not diverse enough. None of the images are rotated, so the neural net will not perform well on a rotated keyboard. This is where a technique called data augmentation comes in. It can perform random rotation, shifting, and resizing on the images during the training phase. This allows the neural net to recognize rotated characters, and it also helps prevent overfitting. Here is an example of data augmentation. The top row is the original images, and the bottom row is the augmented images. You can see that the letter K got rotated, and the letter Q got shifted. Now that we have covered deep learning, I'm going to briefly talk about how tracking of the red circle works. The OpenCV library has all the necessary functions to implement tracking. First, each video frame is filtered to obtain all the red pixels, as shown in this window. Then, Candy Edge Detection is applied to obtain the edges, as shown here. Finally, the edges are fed into a half transform function. If an edge looks like a circle, it'll get detected. You can lower the sensitivity of the function to allow imperfect circles to be detected. I want to spend a little bit of time to talk about this thing that taps on the keyboard. My robot doesn't grip firmly because the servo torque is quite low. It's difficult to find something that doesn't fall out while typing. This thermoplastic is perfect for the job. It becomes soft and moldable after being soaked in hot water for a while. To create the perfect indentation, I imprinted the gripper directly into the plastic while it's still moldable. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.